and do some more Monty Python because I love fucking Monty Python. And I love finding things that I haven't seen about Monty Python yet. Yes. So we're going to do Hell's Grannies and the Four Yorkshiremen together. I can just imagine what that's about. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's see what Hell's Grannies are. This would be interesting. It's like maybe my grandmother. <laughs> yeah, probably, if they could. <laughs> this is a frightened city. Wait for it. Greta, cut. This <laughs> is a frightened city. Over these streets, over these houses, hangs a pall of fear. An ugly kind of violence is rife, stalking the town. <laughs> yes, gangs of old ladies attacking fit, defenseless young men. <laughs> Oh my god, really? Well, they just <laughs> come up to you and push you like, you know, shove you off the pavement. There's usually about four or five of them. Yeah, sometimes there's three or four of them. <laughs> it's not even safe to go out down to the shops anymore. <laughs> Grannies are no respecter of race, creed, or sex. <laughs> Theirs is a harsh, ruthless world. A tough world, a world in which the surgical <laughs> stocking is king. What are they in it for, these senile delinquents, these layabouts in lace? Oh, the violence. The prestige, mainly. The free gifts. Putting the knee in the groin. We like pulling the heads off sheep. <coughs> Auntie takes. Yeah. We have a lot of trouble with these grannies. Pension day is the worst. As soon as they get it, they blow the lot on milk, tea, sugar, a tin of meat for the cat. The whole crux of the problem, uh, nice. <laughs> in the basic dissatisfaction of these senile delinquents uh, with the world as they find it. They begin to question uh, the values of their society. Uh, they see their sons and daughters uh, growing up to become accountants, uh, solicitors, uh, so sociologists even, uh, and they begin to wonder, is it all worth it? Is it all... <laughs> <laughs> Another prime target for vandalism is telephone boxes. But mostly, they just live for kicks. But there are other kinds of violence abroad. Other gangs equally vicious, equally determined, such as the baby snatchers. <laughs> I left him outside for a few moments while I got some Brillo pads. When I came back, he was gone. He was only 48. And also, vicious gangs of keep left signs. <laughs> what the? Right? Stop that. It's silly. <laughs> Very silly indeed. Yes. Started off as a nice little idea about old ladies attacking young men, but now it's just got silly. His hair's too long for a vicar, too. And you can tell those are not proper keep left signs. Clear off the lot of you! <laughs> you, come with me. <laughs> I'm wobbling away. <laughs> Don't come the brigadier bit with us, dear. We all know where you've been, you military fairy. <laughs> Okay, I gotta go. I gotta find that one we now. Gotta find that one. Okay. Oh my god, that was so funny. <laughs> oh fuck yeah, it is. It's silly, but it's fucking brilliant. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Baby snatch. And then deep left side. But the, there's a baby carriage there too, and I thought I it was them like yeah. stealing babies, you know. I looked them all left them outside. He was only forty-eight. <laughs> oh, 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 my cheeks hurt. Okay, we'll uh, the other one. Oh my. Okay, God. this one's called the Four Yorkshire uh, Men. My eyes are leaking. And uh, this is yeah. um, 
pretty old too. What is it? The four Yorkshire? The four Yorkshire men. Yeah, a lot of people said you got to watch that. So, okay. Yorkshire. Yorkshire. Yeah, it's probably Yorkshire. Just, Yorkshire, not Yorkshire. Because somebody said that the Yorkshire pudding wasn't. I wasn't pronouncing it properly right. or something. I don't know why I want to say Yorkshire. I think in because Canada it's, the way it's different. It's spelled, yeah. yeah. In York, Canada, Yorkshire. you'd say Yorkshire, and you in the UK it would be Yorkshire. Yeah. Yeah. Yorkshire, okay. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, we're all backwards here in Canada. <laughs> all right, here we go. Very possible, this possible, Lizzie. Very possible. All right. All right. All right. A good glass of Chateau Le Chateau, eh, Josiah? Oh, you're right there, Obadiah. All right. Who would have thought 30 years ago? We'd all be sitting here drinking Chateau de Chasselet, eh? Uh, <laughs> them days, we're glad to have the price of a cup of tea. All right, a cup of cold tea. Uh, without milk or sugar. Or tea. <laughs> In a cracked cup and all. Oh, we never used to have a cup. We used to have to drink out of a roll-up newspaper. <laughs> the best we could manage was to suck on a piece of damp cloth. <laughs> but, you know, we were happy in those days, although we were poor. Because we were poor. Aye. My old dad used to say to me, money doesn't bring you happiness, son. He was right. Aye. I was happier then, and I had nothing. We used to live in this tiny old tumble-down house with great big holes in the roof. <laughs> house? You were lucky to live in a house. We used to live in one room, all 26 of us, no furniture, half the floor was missing. We were all huddled together in one corner for fear of falling. <laughs> You were lucky to have a room. We used to have to live in the corridor. Oh, we used to dream of living in a corridor. <laughs> Would have been a palace to us. We used to live in an old water tank on a rubbish tip. <laughs> we got woke up every morning by having a load of rotting fish dumped all over us. <laughs> house. <laughs> well, when I say house, it was just a hole in the ground covered by a sheet of tarpaulin. But it was a house to us. We were evicted from our hole in the ground. <laughs> we had to go and live in a lake. You were lucky to have a lake. There were 150 of us living in a shoebox in the middle of the road. <laughs> Cardboard box. Aye. You were lucky. <laughs> we lived for three months in a rolled up newspaper in a septic tank. <laughs> you used to have to get up every morning at six o'clock and clean the newspaper, go to work down the mill, 14 hours a day, week in, week out, for six months a week. And when we got home, our dad would thrash us to sleep with his belt. <laughs> Luxury. <laughs> we used to have to get out of the lake at three o'clock in the morning, clean the lake, eat a handful of hot gravel, work 20 hours a day at mill for twopence a month, come home and dad would beat us around the head and neck with a broken bottle if we were lucky. <laughs> well, of course, we had it tough. We used to have to get him out of the shoebox in the middle of the night and lick the road clean with our tongues. <laughs> we had to eat half a handful of freezing cold gravel, work 24 hours of that mill for four months every six years, and when we got home, our dad would slice us in two with a bread knife. <laughs> right. I had to get up in the morning at 10 o'clock at night, half an hour before I went to bed, <laughs> eat a lump of cold poison, work 29 hours a day down mill, and pay mill owner for permission to come to work, and when we got home, our dad would kill us and dance about in our grave, singing hallelujah. <laughs> oh. Are you trying to tell the young people of today that? And they won't believe you. Oh, no, no, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that's just silly, too. <laughs> you know what? That's that, a description I, of Monty Python. It's just, it's brilliant actually, silliness. You, you know, know what that kind of highlights? Like, you know how there's people that always got to outdo you? Up, you know, up it does, yeah. 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 It's like... Oh, I was sick today. Oh, you were sick. Oh, I was really sick. I, I was out for sick three for days. Two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or something we, like that. Or you had to walk to school. I had to walk to school in ten miles with bare feet and three feet of snow uphill both ways. Yeah. Yeah. No, that we we know people like that. His parents. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yes. There's always somebody, eh? There's always somebody like mm -hmm. that. All right. That was great. His Hopefully. mom will be like, the neighbor, you know, he, the new neighbor, he goes out two hours in the morning, two hours a night. I wonder where he goes. You know, <laughs> well, I'm that, not nosy. I'm just wondering. Yeah, but that's, that's not outdoing somebody. That's no, just being nosy. That's, that's yeah. True. yeah. Get your story straight. It's, yeah, the little small town mentality. Yeah. Kinda... No, no, it's a big town, too. 
Big people yeah. outdo each other. It's probably more so in the city, I would bet. Oh, keeping up yeah. with the Joneses? Yeah, that's and right. Stuff like that, yeah. 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 Luxury cars and whatever. Ah, yeah. fuck. That's stupid. We don't, we don't go to the city too often with our dog sleds. No. We buy everything used, <laughs> you know. We live in our igloos. <laughs> Why pay brand new shit? Like, in my igloo, you know. When you can get it, and it's still running. <laughs> we used to have to get up in the morning and eat gravel beside the igloo and whale fat. We had to dig through the snow first to get to the rocks. Yeah. Cut through the ice with a pick. <laughs> we didn't have those machine ogres. We Wipe had the augers. Off. Ogres. <laughs> ogres. Augers. <laughs> ice auger. Okay. We used to have to use a butter knife to dig through the ice. A spoon. A rusty spoon. A wooden chopstick. And we didn't have any tetanus <laughs> shots. <laughs> Okay, we're just getting silly now. All right. Yeah. That was good. Thanks, guys. <laughs> See you next time. Hope you enjoyed some Monty Python. I'll put some, like, animation up the front and back. Fuck. You'll That's, have fun. They know. I know.